Welcome to the morning prayer meeting. If you have the Bible, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 11. Now, brothers, I wanted to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you are of a first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter, and then to the twelve. After that he appeared to the more than five hundred of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, to the some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James then to all the apostles, and last of all he appeared to me also. <coughs> Sorry, added to one of normally born. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what we believed. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 11, special verse 10. What Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. You can memorize that scripture if, if you pass. It's a very powerful scripture. Paul, he said that I am what I am by the grace of God. And he said that I work harder than all of apostles. Yet not I. He said in the, mean, in the beginning, I work. But he said, not I. <laughs> he didn't deny. The I don't want to work hard, but not I. But he said, then, <coughs> but the <coughs> sorry, grace of God that was with me. Grace of God. Let the grace of God work in powerfully in your life. Amen. Amen. Where is the grace of God? Grace of God is, is in Christ Jesus. You're working very hard, not by your own power, not by your own your strength, not by your own ability. Nothing, you are nothing, but by the grace of God, by the grace of God. Paul, he say about, uh, he preached the gospel to Corinthian Christian, and he speak about that Jesus died for our sins according to the scripture. He always say according to the scripture, according to the scripture. Mm -hmm. Jesus died on the cross according to the scripture, and he raised up from the dead according to the scripture. And he speak like this. In the he Jesus appeared to Peter and twelve disciples, even five hundred people. Five hundred people. Five hundred people saw. Jesus went to heaven. Do you know that? When Jesus went to heaven we called the uh, ascension. And five hundred people saw. Actually before Jesus went to heaven, he asked all the people, stay in Jerusalem. Don't leave. Receive the Holy Spirit. How many people received the Holy Spirit? On 120. Where are the 380? <coughs> They're gone. <coughs> They're gone. They, do you know when Jesus says something, even when God says something, <laughs> He didn't give us the exact time. If Jesus say to disciples and 500 people, if you stay in Jerusalem for 10 days and you receive the Holy Spirit. I think all 500 people received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Did Jesus say to them, 10 days later, receive the Holy Spirit? 
He never said that. How many days did Jesus stay in this world after resurrected? Forty days. After Jesus went to heaven, how many days later did the Holy Spirit come? After. After when ascension. After Jesus went to heaven. Ten days. In total, how many days? Fifty days. We go Penta. Penta means fifty. Pentecost. <coughs> from, from resurrection day to uh, Pentecost day. Fifty days later, people received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Paul say that you must uh, you know uh, receive the word and then you push the gospel look he say whether it was uh, yeah, he shared the gospel he preached and if you look at verse 2 by this gospel you are saved yeah by this gospel you are saved if you hold hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. Preach the gospel. Last Sunday, some I think some brother, he brother Roger, he shared a testimony. You know, his his brother received the water baptism. Did you see that uh, his video? His brother and his sister-in-law almost, uh, you know, divorced. But brother Roger sent the word of the law. He didn't say a greeting, hello, how are you? It's good to hello, how are you, greeting to each other. So the fellowship of saying is good, but most important thing is he sent the word of the Lord. When you send the word of God, the you know, word of God convince him, touch him. And then he, his brother and sister know this talk by the word of God. Whenever I meet some people on the street and they gave their life to Jesus, I get their number. And then I send their picture and I send the word of the law. I send the word of the law. It's very important. If you say only, hello, how are you? Thank you, I met you. I'm so glad to we, we met each other in the street. <coughs> Nothing wrong to greetings. But send the gospel, send the word of the law continuously. If you share the word of God, it's the best, best of the best, sharing the word of the law. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Can you say to each other, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Say to by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Yeah. God changed this man, Saul, to become Paul. And look at the chapter 15, verse 31. 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 31, he said, I die every day. I mean that, brothers, just as surely as I glow, glory over you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah? He said, I die every day. If you die daily, who shall live daily? Jesus. Yeah? Jesus shall live daily. I die daily, Jesus live daily. I must decrease, Jesus must increase. Yeah? I must die. I die daily. Paul said, you know, by the grace of God, I am what I am, not by my own power. He said, you know what he said, even I am the least of apostles and do not even deserve to the call to an apostle. Do you understand? People call him apostle, even God call him apostle is a miracle, is a privilege. He said, because I persecuted the church of God. He was killer. <coughs> He's persecuted the churches. He's not deserved to be an apostle. But by the grace of God. By the grace of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Do you know what does it mean? By the grace of God. By the grace of God is a is a you 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 don't earn by your own your power or your work. It's a freely. Freely you receive it. By the grace of God means you receive it freely, freely. Do, do you pay for this air? It's freely. It's a grace. You need a grace. Did you pay for your salvation? No. Freely you receive the salvation by the grace of God through your faith. Jesus paid for you. Do you know that? 
Jesus paid for you. Who paid for you, this air? Jesus paid for you. It's so expensive. Do you, you saw that uh, how much expensive the oxygen tank in the COVID time? So expensive. One of our branch pastor, his father, get the uh, air, you know, with oxygen. In Africa, ten dollars is very, very big money. But do you know what pastor say there? They charge one hour ten dollars. <laughs> get oxygen through the oxygen mask from the oxygen tank. Ten dollars per hour. So expensive. If you pay for it for this air, you must be multi billionaire <laughs> to get this uh, air freely. Therefore so expensive things we call uh, priceless. Priceless. Of course uh, we have uh, the water filter and last night we changed the filter and we drink the clean water but even tap water is still clean you can drink it you know so precious thing is free free same thing salvation so precious but Jesus want to give you salvation freely freely but unfortunately people they don't believe they don't want can you look at the Galatians 2.20? Galatians 2.20 say, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Yeah? I no longer live. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. This is a great blessing. If you no longer live and Christ lives in you, how wonderful. It's a great privilege, the blessing. Yeah, you no longer live, but Christ lives in you. People, they don't understand how the Christ, how the Savior of the world lives inside of me. It's a mystery. <coughs> Where is Jesus physically? In heaven. Where is Jesus spiritually? In our heart. In our heart. It's very, very important to know. And then look at the Second Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter two, verse one. Second Timothy, chapter two, verse one, say, "You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus." Where is the grace? In Christ Jesus. Paul say that I work in very hard more than any other apostle, but not I. Yeah? The grace of God working in my life. If the grace of God, yeah, if the grace of God was with you, yeah, be with you, which means Jesus Christ be with you, where is the grace of God? Where? In Christ Jesus. According to Second Timothy chapter two, verse one. Yeah, be strong, my son Timothy. The grace of God is in Christ Jesus. Therefore, if the grace of God be with you, that means Jesus Christ be with you. Jesus Christ working inside of your life, not you. Look like you working very hard, not you, but Jesus Christ working inside of you very powerfully. This is my prayer. Lord Jesus, can you work in powerfully in my life? Yeah? And you can see, you can see how Jesus working in your life. Yeah. <coughs> you used to have a schizophrenia, yeah? Schizophrenia, yeah. <coughs> what kind of sickness? Paranoia. These are two, two, two people, yeah? You talk to each other, sir, mm. inside. One man, but two people live together. You talk by, by yourself, schizophrenia, that sickness. Same thing. I talk to the Jesus. Can you imagine? Jesus lives inside of my heart. I talk to him. But not that kind of sickness. <laughs> I talk to the Jesus. Jesus lives inside my heart. I always ask him Jesus before I do something. Shall I bring this person or not? Shall I go this way or not? Shall I stop it? Then I always put a leaflet inside my heart. I sorry, leaflet inside my car. 
I brought around one box, one hundred one thousand uh, uh, leaflet inside of my car. While I was driving, Jesus speak to me very clearly. Now you can stop in this area and uh, put the leaflet in this area. I stop. I do. And then, um, good news, we're waiting for 50,000 leaflets on the way. We, today is the first of, first of August there. Yeah? And uh, we will receive the, we will receive the 50,000 leaflet this month. I did it in two weeks time. And then uh, this good news. And always one box is 1,000. I put the one box of the leaflet inside my car. And then uh, do you know how long take time to distribute the 1,000 leaflet? Within one and a half an hour. One and a half an hour, I put a leaflet in that area. And then I was so encouraged. I just obey. I obey. And then when I visit somebody's house, yeah, God, I go there earlier. I put a leaflet around that house. And, I put, uh, and then put a leaflet. Sometimes a hundred house, sometimes three hundred houses. When I put a leaflet around that area, Actually, the word of God put the uh, in, go inside of the house. The word of God dominate that house, that area. Therefore, it's amazing that area no more dominated by Satan. The word of God take control that area. The Holy Spirit take control. Jesus take control that area. Therefore, wherever I go, I always uh, even even here. A love story, Jesus. Always, I have the 20 or 30 or 40 leaflet inside my pocket, in the jacket, I put in there. And then I give the leaflet in, in the shop, or on the street, or in the bus station, everywhere, everywhere. You have, yeah? yeah. You always keep in there. Yeah, always, yeah? Always keep in the, uh, some leaflet in your pocket and they distribute. And then when you give, do you know who is working? Jesus is working. <laughs> yeah, well done. Yeah. We ju our job is just to uh, give like this, just this way. And then Jesus is working. Can you save somebody? No. You don't save yourself even. <laughs> no one. Impossible. But Jesus will save the soul. But what is your duty? Your duty is to preach the gospel. In season and out of season. When you preach it, and then you can see the, the grace of God is working. Grace of God working. Holy Spirit working. Yesterday I met a brother James. So he will, I think he will come to church. I know his mother. I know his family. For over for five years, more than five years I knew them. I went to his mom's house and prayed. Yesterday, are you hungry? He said, okay, I'm okay. He wanted to drink the coffee. But when he went to the uh, restaurant, he changed his mind. He wanted to eat something. He enjoyed. He went to the prison over 90 times. Have you seen somebody went to the prison over 90 times? It's a, I think it's a world record, I think. <laughs> 90 times. And then we prayed together. I prophesied for him. He will preach the gospel. He will preach the gospel. I promise you will be a great evangelist. Two, week, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, he came here <coughs> shouting. And uh, he disturbing the service. I told him, stop it, brother. And I think he's coming this Sunday. But who will change him? Only by the grace of God. Only by the grace of God, God can change him. And I spent time with him, prayed together with him. You know what is our job? As Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, He changed me. I was a terrible man. I killed a Stephen. But Lord, you can do something by your grace. By the grace of God, Brother Mark, come back. It's a miracle. When somebody left, they never come back. Thank God <laughs> you come back. Do you know that it's a grace of God? By the grace of God. By the grace of God. Not by your own power. Not by your own your your will or your, no, by the grace of God, only by the grace of God. How can you go to heaven? By the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, only by the grace of God, not by your, on your power. Only by the grace of God you can go to heaven. Can you say to me, by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, I am what I am. 
Amen. That is your true, your identity. Only by the grace of God, I am a child of God. Only by the grace of God, I am born again. Only by the grace of God, my name is written on the book of life. Only by the grace of God, one day I'll go to heaven. Only by the grace of God, I'm working very hard for the glory of the Lord. Not by all my power. The grace of God be with me. Who is Jesus Christ be with me. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. I die daily. Can you say, teacher, I die daily in Jesus' name? I die daily. When you die daily, Jesus lives daily in your life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. By the grace of God, I am what I am. I work very hard more than any other people, but not I. But the grace of God with me. Only by your grace, I can glorify your name. I can follow you. I'll serve in you. By the grace of God, I can preach the gospel. Not by our own will, our power. Nothing to do with us. Only your grace. As Paul said, I die daily. We claim the same thing, I die daily. We crucified our sinful nature on the cross. We follow Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pray for mission to Bulgaria and pray for Christopher. We will preach the gospel for his mommy, all his family in Bulgaria and uh, in two weeks' time, 14 to 18. And pray for mission to America in October. Yeah. And then pray for people in this area. Yeah. And there are many people, vulnerable people in this area. Pray for them. God can do something. Pray for revival in UK. Thank you. God bless you.